the criminal justice system. Did you know that the criminal justice system involves more than just the courts and the judiciary? The criminal justice system in Trinidad and Tobago includes various agencies and organizations that work together to detect and investigate crime, provide evidence, arrest and charge suspects, prosecute, defend the accused, manage court matters, and imprison rehabilitated offenders. Think of the system as a relay race. The judiciary runs the final lap. We'll delve deeper into the judiciary's role and its interaction with the criminal justice system's key players in this video, tracking a criminal case's journey from the crime's occurrence. Police investigate and charge suspects. The police charge a suspect once they accumulate adequate evidence. Serious crimes like murder or kidnapping require consultation with the Director of Public Prosecutions before charging. Following this, the suspect is presented to a district court initiating preliminary inquiries in the case of indictable offenses or summary trials for summary offenses. Magistrates otherwise known as district court judges hear these. Police responsibilities in this process include filing the case and handling courtroom affairs such as maintaining order and escorting defendants, providing the court with the defendant's criminal history from the criminal records office to aid in bail decisions, safeguarding and submitting evidence such as firearms, clothing to the Forensic Science Center for analysis. Scientists analyze and interpret. Evidence collected by the police including firearms, narcotics or documents are analyzed at the Forensic Science Center in Federation Park. The center has divisions specializing in post-mortem examinations and various forensic disciplines including a lab for DNA analysis. Services they provide include determining the firearm type used in a crime, identifying drugs or poisons in bodily fluids, counterfeit currency and stolen vehicles examination, seized drugs examination and analysis. Police rely on the center's written reports, which include expert findings and opinions for court evidence presentation handled by another key player in the justice system, the DPP. Director of Public Prosecutions presents evidence. The Director of Public Prosecutions oversees all criminal prosecutions with state counsel presenting evidence against defendants. The police provide the case file, including all evidence. At the district courts though, they are policemen who prosecute. Defendants can self-represent or opt for an attorney. If they can't afford one, the Legal Aid and Advisory Authority or the Public Defender's Department may assist. Judges and Judicial Officers hear the case. The Judiciary comprises three levels, District Courts, the High Court and the Court of Appeal. The Children Court handles cases with defendants under 18, offering child-specific support and sanctions to aid positive development and restoration. Criminal cases fall into three categories, dictating which court hears the case. Summary matters. Summary offenses such as theft handled by the district courts, indictable matters. Serious crimes such as murder start with a preliminary inquiry in district courts, which determines if the case proceeds to the high court. Triable either way matters. These offenses can go to either the high court or a district court based on the defendant's decision after the prosecution's recommendation. Summary Proceedings Court Hearings at the District Court If a defendant pleads guilty, the District Court judge will sentence them directly by passing the trial. However, if they plead not guilty, the matter goes to trial. Bail A District Court judge can grant bail for all cases except for murder. Only a High Court judge can decide on bail for murder. To help the court decide on any application for bail, the defendant argues that he is not a flight risk and will not harm anyone or commit an offense while on bail. The prosecution has to show that there is a real chance that the defendant might disappear or harm someone or commit an offense while on bail. In a summary trial, the procedure includes The police prosecutor presents the state's case and the defense cross-examines the witnesses. The prosecution cross-examines defense witnesses Post this, the district court judge evaluates the evidence and delivers a verdict. If guilty, 
the judge imposes a sentence which can vary from imprisonment to probation, community service, or rehabilitation programs. Defendants can appeal to the Court of Appeal if they disagree with the verdict. For preliminary inquiries for more serious crimes, the process is as follows. It's a hearing, not a trial. Evidence is either given orally or filed as witness statements. In both cases, the defense gets to cross-examine. The judge decides if there's enough evidence to move the case to the High Court. Defendants can either be discharged or committed for trial. If committed, the court must prepare and send all depositions and all relevant documents to the office of the DPP, who then must file an indictment at the Criminal High Court for proceedings to continue. Until the DPP files an indictment, nothing can happen. The case cannot go to trial in the High Court, and even if the defendant wants to plead guilty, he cannot. He must wait on the indictment to be filed. Case flow through the Criminal High Court When a case goes to the Criminal High Court, it undergoes four main stages. 1. Assignment to a High Court Judge After the DPP files the indictment, a High Court Judge is assigned the case aided by a Master of the High Court. The Master also hears bail applications, except in murder cases. The court serves the indictment on the defendant. 2. Case Management Phase The Master guides the parties as per the criminal procedure rules to ensure a smooth progression. The master ensures that both sides submit and exchange the necessary documents that parties have their witnesses available or agree on tendering their statements and that the case is managed. Post this phase, a certificate of readiness is filed indicating the chosen trial mode, jury or judge alone. There are alternatives such as maximum sentence indication MSI or plea discussion and agreement which the master can inquire about. 3. Pre-trial review If the case is going to a full trial, the case is transferred to the judge who conducts a pre-trial review. Here, applications from the prosecution or defense are heard and the trial date is set. Trial phase The defendant pleads guilty or not guilty in an arraignment. The prosecution presents its case first, followed by the defense. The judge or jury decides a verdict. If the trial was by judge alone, the judge must explain the reasons for the verdict. A jury does not give reasons or explanation for their verdict. Appeals against a guilty verdict or an acquittal after the defendant submits that the prosecutor did not make out their case can be made to the Court of Appeal or the Privy Council with special permission. 4. Sentencing Phase If found guilty, the defendant may present mitigating facts to the court to try to shorten the sentence. Sentencing may be custodial or non-custodial, with several agencies aiding in the rehabilitation of the accused. Probation Services Department can help with non-custodial sentences. If mental capacity is an issue, an evaluation at the St. Anne's Psychiatric Hospital may be ordered. If sentenced to prison, the offender is placed under the care of the prison service. 5. For these steps, the court must rely on the parties or their lawyers to be present and ready to present their case. If there is no prosecutor, there is no case presented and so the court cannot go on to hear the case. Without the defendant's lawyer, it is very difficult and sometimes impossible for the court to proceed. Jurors Jurors are selected from a list of electors that is settled periodically. The judiciary sends out staff who are marshal's assistants to find the persons in order to serve hundreds of jury summons throughout the country each month. Those who are served can apply for exemptions which are heard by a master. Those who remain can be placed to sit on a jury for a trial after surviving challenges by the parties. Role of the Prison Service the prison service takes over once a defendant is committed for trial or a prisoner is serving a sentence. The court order is called a remand or a warrant of commitment. The collaboration with the judiciary continues because the court relies on the prison service to ensure the defendant's court attendance, maintain comprehensive, up-to-date inmate records, provide progress reports on inmates to the court. Conclusion The judiciary is independent 
but does not work alone. It collaborates with many organizations which must pass the baton along smoothly in order to ensure that every participant in the criminal justice system enjoys the protection of the law.